So quartz actually has a tendency to crack if you don't drill it correctly. That's why we have this, which is a specific drill bit to drill into quartz, concrete, those types of hard materials without avoiding it cracking. You can also drill into like plant pots and other things like that. So I'm gonna be using this. And also this to manage heat. Here's how we do it. So first off, we're gonna want to take the bit that we're actually gonna be using. I'm gonna use the largest one that comes in this set. I'll link it in the description. Got it off Amazon, not a bad price at all. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is take the bit, put it in your drill, tighten it up. Right, there we go. Now you just wanna, I should do this over like a cardboard or something. One second. Okay, so I'm gonna do this over like a scrap piece of cardboard just so I don't damage the quartz underneath. And you can just cut this by hand, but I think this probably might be quicker. And this is what we end up on the other side. Now, I don't think we're gonna be needing the green part anyway, so. And you want this to be as thin as possible so that I can more absorbent and whatnot. So I'm gonna just peel off that. Um, we're gonna damp it with some water and just soak it. Make sure it's nice and wet. Now what this is gonna do is actually cool the bit as it goes along. It's more or less fully saturated at this point. Yeah, so as I was saying, this is gonna, just gonna cool the bit as you go along so that it doesn't wear the bit too much because once this gets dull, then you have more tendency to want to crack and it's not gonna cut as quickly and there's a whole bunch of other issues. So if you want it to go smoothly or you want it to just, you know, work for more than one time, recommend this so I'm just gonna shove that in there and since we're dealing with water I'm just gonna go underneath here and put a bucket just so you can catch the water right around here should be fine okay so back to the top move this cardboard and I'm gonna drill I think right around here to me it's not really too big of a deal where I drill and a drill probably right around here and what you want to do when you first start off is first off put it in one or low depending on what your drill has so you can get a nice low turn now this is going to help you keep it steady while you try to get a, an angle to drill a little bit like that now i switched it to two since we already have the whole already started I guess so let's go you know, nice and slowly just apply pressure and the bit should do most of the work if not all of it be patient So I think I might have gone a little bit too <coughs> too deep. So I messed up on that. I didn't take out the sponge before we reached the end and that's why we have this broken bit now. So this bit is just barely big enough to get down there and I failed to account for that. I probably should have gotten a bigger one okay so different day um this is clearly not working out so a few days later got myself one of these from amazon so this one is a two inch this one definitely feels a lot more robust so 
hopefully that means a good thing. This one is probably good for like, you know, ceramics, maybe if you're going through tile or something, something fairly thin, but if you want something thicker, you're going through something thicker like a countertop, this hopefully would be a lot better. It feels a lot heavier in the hand, a little bit more robust, so high hopes. Let's get started. What if I could only do it the right way? How deep does this one go? It's like a comparison, I guess. So for this one, at the bottom here, and we have some clearance there. So that that's more promising. Right. Well, first off, oh, that was a little bit too much water, but I have a little bit of silicone there. Uh, I should mop some of that up. Be back. You know what? I'm just going to leave this here just so we can have like some sort of barrier. So, and this one seems to have some sort of tip, so it, it should in theory have a little bit better, you know, starting than the other one. Let's see if that actually works out. But I'm just going to put this in the middle and just try and center it as well as possible. Make sure I cover the whole hole and then just get it started. First thing I have to say is that it starts a lot easier than the last one where I had to kind of just um, start the way I did. So that's that inside of there. This is progress. Right. So that's some of the progress. It's making a pretty clean cut, which is nice. It's pretty sharp corners. I'm just gonna let some of that water get in there. And continue. Now it's getting a bit more in there, so. Um, I think I probably should take this starter piece out, which is actually removable, I believe. So give me a little less resistance. How you do that is one sec. Just need to. I know it's all messy already, but okay, so to remove this piece, you just want to take this. And it's basically just an Allen key. And I'm not sure if that's visible. Just turn that Allen key. Get it out there. I think this should just pop out. Now you only have your um now you only have the actual drill that you need. The hole's already started, so it shouldn't make too much of a big deal. Okay, so fill that hole with water again and let's go. This should give a lot less resistance now. Just need to keep filling it with water and making sure that hole stays wet. You don't want a dry hole. It's unpleasant. Okay, so we're coming close to the end there probably, I would assume. More of that water in there. It's actually kind of hard to see the hole though. should use two hands. Just that little 
little piece. Oh, I think I got my drill stuck, and this is smoking hot. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this rest for a little bit. So the battery isn't like one percent. So this definitely does take some power to get through. You can see all of the material that we've gotten, all the quartz bits. Nice and just thick slurry almost. And this actually cools down fairly quickly. Like it's cool to the touch already. So this metal actually does conduct heat fairly well. Probably might be advantageous to take off some of this slurry. Let's see how that goes. So bucket still perfectly lined up. Oh, and there we go. It's pretty simple. And you can see that hole. That's a pretty nice hole. The walls are really smooth. No, you're going to want to file along these edges or sand them at least because they're fairly clean and sharp, which is good and also bad for your cords because you don't want it like catching on here and rubbing and wearing down your insulation on your cords, making them a more of a fire hazard at that point. You can rub your finger around it, no need to worry about being cut. It's, uh, I'd say it's a pretty good job. I'd say it came out pretty good. Yep, just as simple as that. If you want, you could put like those um, rubber grommets that they sell. I'll put uh, for me, I don't really need that right now at least. It's going to be behind the television anyway. So not really a big deal, but if you want to make it look pretty, you can probably get one of those rubber grommets. <laughs> 